I used Level Quick RS self-leveling compound to level up this bathroom before installing the new tile. I'm covering my entire process from start to finish, including the prep work, so I've broken it all down into chapters for you guys. I've also linked all of the supplies used down in the description box. The first thing you want to do is figure out where your floor is out of level to determine where to pour the self-leveling compound and how much of it you will need. The best way to do this would be with a laser and self-leveling pins or tripods, but they're expensive and out of my budget, so I just used the tools I already had. There was a crack running through the middle of the concrete, and using a level, I could see that the floor was higher on one side of the crack than the other side. I needed to build up that lower side to be level with the higher side. The higher side was fairly level already, but the lower side was sloping downwards. By using the level and measuring the gap underneath it, I could see that the lower side sloped to about a quarter of an inch lower than the highest point in the floor. Level Quick's guide, which I will link down in the description box for you guys, shows you how much coverage you can get per bag depending on the thickness of the pour. I only needed one bag, but I bought two just in case. Before leveling the floors, you have to do the prep work and any needed repairs to the concrete. Concrete needs to be clean and dry, so start out by removing any contaminants. I used a putty knife to scrape off all of the dried paint and joint compound that I had gotten all over the floor during this makeover process and any other foreign materials that were stuck to the floor. After that, I swept everything up, then mopped the floors until the water ran clean. Once the floor was dry, I started working on repairs. Any cracks or holes need to be filled to keep the leveler from running down into them. I used a tiny screwdriver to scrape out anything that had fallen down into the crack and pulled out the tiny pieces of broken concrete. Then I took a nylon wire brush and scrubbed inside the crack to remove any dirt and debris that the screwdriver couldn't get. After sweeping everything up, I took a vacuum and cleaned out any remaining dust or debris from the crack. To fill in the crack when you're done cleaning it out, you want to start with some backer rod. I couldn't find one small enough in stock the day I needed it, so I just went with the three quarters of an inch and cut it down into small enough pieces, making sure they were small enough to fit into the crack, but large enough to fully fill in the gap. Then I used a screwdriver to push the backer rod down into the crack. I used the backer rod to make the crack no deeper than half of an inch and made sure it was snug enough to keep anything from seeping underneath it. Once I was done with that, I took a tube of Quickrete, self-leveling sealant, and a caulking gun to fill in the rest of the crack. I like this particular product because it doesn't require a primer, it has a fast cure time, and it's self-leveling which makes it really easy to use. There was an old vent hole in the floor that I blocked off a couple of inches down and then filled in the rest with concrete patch, but unfortunately I didn't get that filmed. I put the first layer on too thick and it cracked, so the second layer filled in those cracks just to make sure the leveler wouldn't seep through. After that, I left the repairs to dry and fully cure. To keep the self-leveler from flowing anywhere you don't want it to go, you have to build a dam. I decided to try something different and it worked out really well as you'll see in the end. I took a tube of silicone caulking, cut the tip making a large opening, and started running large beads of caulking underneath the wall. Then I ran my fingers across the caulking to smooth it out. If there were any gaps left after that, I'd fill them in with a little more caulking, then run my finger across it again to smooth it out and help fill in those gaps. You want to make sure there aren't any gaps at the bottom where it meets the concrete and that the dam is higher than the depth of the self-leveler that you have to pour. I built up the caulking higher than it had to be, but I wanted to make sure I didn't leave any space for the leveler to spill over. Usually, you would remove the toilet, but I'm only doing a feather finish on this side of the bathroom, and the toilet was already lifted slightly off of the floor, so I just used the caulking to seal off the toilet, then I used my finger to smooth it out. The bathtub was the same, sitting at the high point of the bathroom, so I just caulked along the bottom of that as well. 
To block off the doorway, I used a scrap piece of plank flooring that I had left over from a previous project and taped it in place in the doorway. And then I gave the bathroom one more really thorough sweep. Concrete is porous and needs to be primed before pouring the self-leveling compound. Level Quick has a primer, but it was out of stock, and I already had this Quickrete Concrete Bonding Adhesive, which does the same thing, so that's what I used. I mixed the primer as directed with equal parts adhesive and water, then I used a paint roller to roll it onto the floor. I started at the other end of the bathroom by the tub, then worked my way towards the door. The primer dries quickly, and once it's dry, you should have a slightly glossy finish to the concrete. If your concrete is fairly porous like mine, you might not have a glossy finish after just one coat. In that case, go ahead and apply a second coat the same way as you did the first. After the second coat is dry, you should have that slightly glossy finish, and at this point, you are ready to mix up the self-leveler. To mix the self-leveling compound, you need a five gallon bucket and something to accurately measure your water with. The directions say to use between five and a quarter and five and three quarters quarts of water, but it took six quarts for me to get the consistency I wanted with this product. You want to measure and pour the water in first, then open the bag and pour the powder in. The bag says to slowly pour while mixing, but it's not possible when you're working alone, so I I just slowly poured the powder in first and had my drill ready to go so I could start mixing right away. This does create a lot of dust so make sure to wear a mask. I forgot mine at first and had to run and grab it. When mixing the self-leveling compound, you will need a stronger drill. I used this DeWalt Flex Volt 60 volt drill with an egg beater mixer. Do not try to use your typical power drill for something like this. If you don't have a drill like this, see if you can borrow or rent one. I'll also link one down in the description box for anybody that's interested. Mix the compound very thoroughly for two minutes and make sure there are no lumps or clumps of powder left in the mixture. Level Quick RS can be applied from a feather finish up to one and a half inches thick per application. I needed a feather finish at the high point near the tub and about a quarter of an inch on the other side of the bathroom. Covering the entire floor, not just the low point, gives me a smoother surface to install the tile on. Starting at the furthest point from the door, I poured the material and spread it out to cover the entire area up to the edges and in to the corners. I poured just enough material to get a thin layer and squeegeed the excess material towards the lower point. You need to manipulate the material to cover every inch of the surface so that it can find its own level from there. You can see the material flowing towards the lower point on its own, but it needs that help to get where it's going. Once I got to the doorway, I poured the rest of the material and spread it out to cover the last of the surface area. The product will continue to move on its own and find its own level within 20 minutes, then within two to four hours, it will be dry enough to walk on. This is what the floor looked like after one hour of dry time, then this is after two hours, and this is the next morning. It's perfectly flat, it's smooth, and it's ready for the new tile. At this point, I double checked the level throughout the bathroom. It's either perfectly plumb or close enough to plumb throughout. If you're installing a large format tile, it needs to be perfectly level. For smaller tiles, it needs to be flat and at least nearly level. The caulking did a great job of keeping the level quick from running under the walls. Once I install the new trim, it'll hide the caulk behind it so there's no need to remove it. Where there there was some splatter from the leveler. I used a razor and a damp paper towel to easily clean it up and I also used the razor to cut back some of the excess caulk from around the tub and the toilet. If this has been helpful, I'd love it if you'd hit that like button to let me know. And in the next episode of my bathroom makeover on a budget series, I'm sharing how I installed this beautiful herringbone peel and stick vinyl tile with grout so make sure you stick around for that. Thank you so much for watching and until next time you can check out one of these videos linked right here.